And finally, we get down to the idea of strong acids, weak acids, strong bases, weak bases. Now, we already said that as far as Arrhenius is concerned, strong bases are hydroxides bonded to group 1 ions, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, etc. Those are considered to be strong bases. Strong Arrhenius bases. Well, what about strong Bronsted Lowry bases? Well, for that, we got to talk about what acids are strong or weak. In order for acids to be considered strong, they have to lose their H plus very easily. In other words, they have to be very soluble in water. They have to ionize 100%. Every last hydrogen has to come off of every last negative ion in order for the acid to be considered strong. For that, we use what's called Ka, the equilibrium ionization constant for an acid which is simply the concentration of the dissolved ions, the hydrogen and the other ion, the negative ion, divided by the strength of any acid left undissolved. Now in a strong acid, every last bit of acid dissolves. That means there's going to be nothing down here, and there's going to be numbers up here divided by zero. Remember what we said about that when we did KEQ? If you divide by zero, your answer is undefined because it's such a huge number, we don't really have a name for it. So therefore, the Ka of a strong acid is going to be very large or large. These top six acids on AE reference table C, these right here are your strong acids, HI through H2SO4. They ionize completely in water to form very weak conjugate bases. Why? Think about equilibrium. If the forward reaction goes to completion, that means the reverse reaction doesn't even get started. That means these ions here are almost, almost impossible for them to pick back up the H plus 1 and reform the acid. The equilibrium doesn't even, isn't even really there. They go to completion full and complete ionization. So these bases are not going to be picking up hydrogens anytime soon. They're very weak. Now as you go down the table, you'll notice that the Ka decreases. 10 to the negative third, 10 to the negative fourth, 10 to the negative fifth, 10 to the negative seventh, 10 to the negative eighth, 10 to the negative tenth, 10 to the negative eleventh, 10 to the negative thirteenth, 10 to the negative fourteenth, smaller than 10 to the negative thirty-sixth, and very small. What that means as you go down the table is the forward reaction is happening to less and less of a degree. These acids are getting less and less soluble as you go down the chart until you get to the bottom. Well, if the forward reaction is barely happening, that means as you go down the table, the reverse reaction is happening more strongly. Or, if I can draw it, forward, 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 and once you get past very large and you have a negative exponent, that means there's more reactants than products. So you start getting it more strongly the other direction. And as you get toward the bottom, well, that's going to go 100% to completion. Weak acids have very strong conjugate bases. So where HI and H through H2SO4 are strong acids, and these guys are very weak conjugate bases, these acids down here like hydroxide, gee, I wonder why Arrhenius picked hydroxide. Look how insanely weak it is as an acid, but look how strong it is as a base. OH- minus makes for a very weak acid, but it makes for a very strong base, which is why Arrhenius picked up on it. It's common and it's very strong. So weak acids, those that have small Ka, will have strong conjugate bases. And the strongest conjugate bases are the ones down toward the bottom.